crucified with Christ, and yet I live. Embrace the cross where Jesus. Welcome to Crossbound Ministries where we are bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, encouraging Christians and pointing sinners to the cross. Will you please pray about supporting our broadcast and ministry that gives us the ability to spread God's word. You can get involved by going to crossboundministry.com. Please welcome our preacher, Mike Sadler, as he brings us an important message from God's word. Praise the Lord. Embrace the love. Amen. If you have your Bible today, you can open up to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John chapter 5 and verse 18 is where we're going to be as we're going through the Gospel of John. John was one of the closest ones to Jesus. Amen. And he's got a lot of great things to say in his Gospel. And as you open up your Bible, you think about that Bible. That Bible is the one thing that is eternal that you can actually physically touch and hold in your hand that will last through all eternity. Amen. That Bible is an amazing book. There is no better gift that you can give to someone than the Bible. It is a gift from God to you, and you can also give it to other people. Amen. So in John chapter 5, in verse 18, as we, we drop into the story here where Jesus had healed a man who had been lame for a very long time, and the Jews, these religious people, were extremely mad at him. And verse 18 tells us, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Hey, this is a very important verse. It tells the Jews became determined to kill the Lord Jesus. How dare you break our Sabbath? How dare you compare yourself to God? But if a man, you know, they were so mad, but if, if Jesus could cure a man on the Sabbath day, he was going to cure him, and he sure did. That man didn't have to suffer one more day. Jesus healed him right then and there. And so when Jesus spoke of God as his father in this verse, they realized that he is claiming to be equal with God. Isn't that something? They didn't realize who they were actually talking to, or they did not want to realize, amen, as many don't today. So to them, this was terrible blasphemy. It was just horrible. But actually, Jesus was only speaking the truth. What does Jesus say he was? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Jesus was giving them the truth. And verse 19 says, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. The Savior, Jesus, is so closely and vitally linked with God that he could not act independently. He can only do what God wants him to do. He does not mean that he didn't have the power to do it. No, because you have to remember Jesus is God in the flesh, but yet he was so closely united with God that the three are one, that he wanted to do God's will. And he said, I can only do what I see the Father is doing. So for a while the Lord claimed equality with the Father, he did not claim independency also. I know that is deep. He is not independent of him. He is actually the same, but see, Jesus is God in the flesh. Jesus is how we have intercession with God the Father. Amen. That is how you get to him, is through Jesus. You're not going to go around to Jesus and get to God. Jesus is the only way. He is the only door. There is the only way. There is only one way to get there, and Jesus is it. And he clearly states that in the gospel 
The, the Lord Jesus clearly intended the Jews to think of him as he's equal with God, as he clearly wants you to know that he is equal with God. Jesus claims to see what the Father is doing. You realize that in this verse? Jesus says that he can see, I'm, I can see what the Father is doing. I can see what the Father wants me to do, and I can't do anything else but that. And see, we're supposed to be so closely linked with Jesus, so such walking in a path with Jesus that we can do nothing except for what Jesus wants us to do. And that is a great example, the way Jesus is talking about God here. I can do nothing except what the Father does and the Father wants me to do. Amen. Jesus is omnipotent. Jesus is all powerful. He has all power is given unto him. And we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. In verse 20 tells us, John chapter 5 and verse 20, for the father loveth the son and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. Hey, it's a special mark of the father's love when his son, that he shows him all things that he does. In other words, I'm completely open. You see everything that I want you to see, everything that I do. And these things Jesus not only saw, he had the power to perform them as well. Remember, Jesus has all power. And so then the Savior went on to say that God would show him greater works than these. That's what the verse said. So that the people might marvel. Amen. You know what I marvel at? God saving a sorry, wretched sinner like me. And I marvel when I see another sinner get saved and they turn their life around. Oh, many might not see the difference in me now because they didn't know me before. But the ones that knew me before, my friends and family, oh, they see a giant difference. And I promise you, if you got saved, they see a giant difference in you also. Why? Because you cannot truly encounter Jesus without him making a real difference in your life. Amen. So all they had seen the Lord Jesus performing miracles, all that they had seen, they had seen him heal a man that had been crippled and lame for 38 years. And he laid there and Jesus told him, get up, pick up your bed and go about your way and walk. And the man did it. And that's what he's talking about. You're going to see greater things than these, greater things than what? Where he healed that man who had been lame for 38 years, yet Jesus healed him with a spoken word. Amen. He says, greater things than this are you going to see? And the greatest thing of all is when Jesus died on the cross and he rose again the third day. The Bible says that he went ascended into the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. And when he in the rose, he had the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And when you have the keys to something, you have power over it. Amen. And that's what he's talking about. Greater things than this, greater things than this miracle will you see. Amen. And verse 21 tells us, For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Here is another clear statement as to the equality with the Son and the Father. Amen. The Jews accused Jesus of making himself equal with God. Amen. Jesus didn't just state, he just didn't make the statement. He truly is equal with God. But I want you to notice that Jesus did not deny the charge that they tried to put against him. Jesus did not deny it. But rather, Jesus set forth some tremendous proofs of the fact that he and the Father are one. Amen. Just as a father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. Now, hold on a minute. Who will Jesus give life to? Well, if you look in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, the Bible says, for whosoever. Now, hold on a minute. Let's look at whosoever. Who is whosoever? Well, whosoever is red, yellow, black, and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen. Rich, tall, short, fat, round, skinny, scrawny, husky, 
built, muscular. Jesus loves them all. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. No one is just picked out to go to heaven or hell. No, it is a personal choice that a person must make because God says all men have some light. Now, in other words, every man, woman, and child has a conscience, and it shows them right from wrong. You have a right to choose God, to choose his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, whosoever, whosoever is every person that's ever walked the planet, whosoever is each and every person has the personal choice to call upon the name of the Lord. What First, the Bible says that you believe it in your heart, that Jesus died on the cross and that God raised him again on that third day. You believe it in your heart and you confess it with your mouth. You repent of your sins and you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, who so ever that is each and every person that has ever walked the planet amen has a choice to be saved or to be lost forever john chapter 5 and verse 22 the bible says for the father judges no man but hath committed all judgment unto the son and the new testament teaches that god the father has committed all the work of judgment to the Son. He has gave the Son all power to judge. And, and in order for the Lord Jesus to do this great work, he must have absolute knowledge and perfect righteousness of everything that goes on on this planet Earth. He must be able to discern the thoughts and motives and intentions of a man and woman's heart. In order to be a perfect judge, you see, you've got to not only know what they did, you've got to know why they did it and what their reason behind it truly was. And see, that's something that a judge on the earth can never truly see. Oh, we can judge what we think they thought they were doing, or we can judge what we think was we was their intentions, or we can judge what we, that they told us was their intentions. But you see, Jesus can see past all that and see right to the heart of the matter, literally, and he is a perfect, upright judge. He most certainly is. And, and so when you stand before him, there'll be no bias, no sir, no ma'am. He'll be able to see right to the intentions of your heart. The Bible even says on that day, on judgment day, there'll be many stand before him. They say, haven't we done many and great and mighty works? in your name cast out devils and demons in your name and Jesus is going to look at them and he's going to discern the intentions of their heart and he's going to say I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity why because he is the true judge he discerns discerns the thoughts and motives of every person's heart and how strange is it that he is standing here Jesus talking to these Jews to these religious leaders he is the judge of all the earth he has all the power he's omnipotent he has all authority to execute judgment yet they did not recognize it or they did not want to recognize it because he took the power away from them listen to me many today are in that same situation they know the gospel. They know the Bible. So you could be at work and never even talk to someone, but just stand, sit there with your Bible open reading it, and they'll get so convicted because they know that Bible stands against the way that they are living, and they don't like that. They know that there's a God because the Bible says that he's told every man in his heart that there is a God, that there is a Godhead, that there is a judgment, that there is a Savior. Amen. And so the Bible is a very powerful thing. And that's why you hear me say that. Not what I say, but the Bible says. Verse 23 says that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. This is such an important verse. I'm going to read that first part again. You need to catch that. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Hey, this is an extremely powerful verse, and I'm going to explain why here in just a minute. So here we have the reason God has given authority to his Son to raise the dead and to judge the world. Amen. And the reason is so that 
All of us should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Listen to me. You are not going to pray to God without going through Jesus. Many think Jesus was just a teacher or a leader or, or a spiritual advisor. No, no. Jesus is God in the flesh. You cannot say you love God and reject Jesus is what this verse is saying. You cannot say you're going to heaven and reject Jesus. You can't say that you and God have fellowship and reject Jesus. Jesus. You can't say you talk to God, but you'll have nothing to do with Jesus. Amen. No, sir, no, ma'am. This verse is telling you that these two are vitally linked. You cannot honor God and not honor the Son at the same time as what the Bible says. You can't say you love God and say you don't love Jesus at the same time as what the Bible says. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which hath sent him him. The Bible says if you reject Jesus, you're rejecting God. That's what the Bible says. You reject Jesus, you're rejecting heaven. If you reject Jesus, you're on your way to hell, the Bible says. You say, that's harsh, Brother Mike. Yes, but I love you enough to tell you the truth. Just like a doctor, if you had a disease and you were going to die and he says, hey, you need this help. You need this medicine. It will greatly help you and save your life. Amen. That's what I'm trying to give you right now. You see, you have something called a sin sickness, and there is no other cure except Jesus. And I love you enough to tell you the truth that Jesus is the only way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. There is no other way. There's not another remedy. There's no other man that can help you. Jesus is the God-man. He was fully God, yet he was fully man in the flesh. Amen. And so when he died on that cross, he was a man, but he was also God. You see, he died as a man, but he had God's power inside of him to raise him from the dead. And when you get saved, that same power moves inside of you, the Holy Spirit. Amen. It'll be your comforter. It'll be your guide. It'll be your teacher. It'll be everything you need him to be. The Bible says that the moment a person gets saved, the Holy Spirit takes up residency in their heart. You think of that. That is a piece of God himself inside of you. He loves you that much. Even an angel does not have a piece of God inside of them like a person that's saved is. The Bible says that the angels desire to look into those things. In other words, they marvel at a person's salvation. Amen? That a piece of God himself could move inside them. And you see, you're not going to get that just going to God. You're not going to get that apart from Jesus. And that's what this verse is saying. You can't say that you love God and you don't honor Jesus. You can't get to heaven because you and God are, are fellowship without going through Jesus. Because there is no fellowship with God without going through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says. And verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, condemnation but is passed from death unto life. And so now we learn how one may receive spiritual life from an escape judgment. In other words, before a person is saved, they are spiritually dead. The Bible says that if you're not saved, you're an enemy of God. You and God are an enmity against each other. In other words, your flesh nature doesn't want nothing to do with God. You see, the reason we love God is because he first loves us, the Bible says. And the Lord Jesus began the verse with this words, most assuredly. Isn't that great? Most assuredly. Most assured, these are the words of God, and he wants to give you life. Drawing attention to the importance of what he was about to say and then he added the very personal announcement. I say to you, the Son of God is speaking to us in a very personal and intimate way here. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. And he says, his past has everlasting life. What is that? That's eternal life. 
through the Lord Jesus Christ. Even if you die one day, this body will get old and die. But you see, Jesus is coming back, the Bible says. It most certainly is, and we'll be with him forever and eternity. And where it says, and shall not come into condemnation. What kind of condemnation? The condemnation is when you have to pay the your own penalty for the sin that is in your life in a place called hell. The Bible says that there's a lot going on in hell. It is not a good place. The Bible says there's weeping and wailing, gnashing of teeth, gnawing of tongue, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. There is a lot going on in hell. And that's what condemnation it is talking about. It's talking about you paying for your own sin. But when you get everlasting life, oh, when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says that you're covered in his blood. What do you mean blood? I mean the Bible says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And you see Jesus never sinned. There is no sin in his blood. He is the spotless perfect lamb of God and when you're covered in his blood and you stand before God God does not see your sins no he sees Jesus himself amen Jesus paid the way but will you accept it will you realize that you're a sinner in need of a savior amen and will you pass from death unto life not just any life, but eternal life, everlasting life, life with God, life with Jesus in a great place called heaven. Amen. Amen. I can think of nothing better than to be in the presence of the thrice holy God. There's a lot of things about heaven. The Bible says that there's streets of gold and walls of jasper and sea of crystal and gates of pearl. But you listen to me. Those aren't the really, truly great things about heaven. Those aren't the really true riches of heaven. The real true riches of heaven is being in the presence of a thrice holy God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The Bible says, can you imagine just being at the throne of God, worshiping God with the angels singing and the heavenly choir going, amen, glory to God. I know I'm not worthy, but because of Jesus, I can go there and you can go there too, amen. We're not worthy. You can't earn your way. You can't work your way. You can't give enough. You can't be good enough, but you can go to that place that God God has prepared for me and for you if you realize you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Repent of your sins and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, you'll get the, the glory and all those other great things walking down the streets of gold, putting your hand on the walls of jasper, rubbing the gates of pearl, fishing in the sea of crystals, amen. But none of it will compare to being in the presence at the throne of a thrice holy God and getting to spend all eternity in his presence, amen. That's going to be a great and mighty thing. It most certainly is. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. The dead, no, the dead that are spiritually dead. The dead that have never been saved. The dead many are walking around today who are spiritually dead. These people were listening to Jesus' voice himself and many chose not to believe. It is a personal choice. They were looking at Jesus in the flesh. They could hear his voice with their own ears, yet they chose not to believe. They were spiritually dead and died in their sins. Oh, but the ones that heard his voice, the ones that, that heard it and applied it and put their faith and trust in him, in his words, they believed every word that he said and they applied it to their life. They have eternal life. Will you do the same? We pray you have been blessed by today's message. If you have been saved or are in need of a prayer, please contact us at 352-247-9200. That's 352-247-9200. Thank you for tuning into Crossbound Ministry Radio Broadcast. Will you please pray about supporting our ministry and broadcast? You can go to crossboundministry.com or send your support or gift to P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. That's P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. For a gift of $25 or more, we will send you a copy of Ray Comfort's book, Nothing Created Everything. 
Please pray for us as our ministry and radio broadcast grows. Tune in every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. to hear a message from our preacher, Mike Sadler. You can follow Crossbound Ministry on Facebook or visit us on the web at crossboundministry.com. If you are a woman in need of help with with your pregnancy, there is hope. You can reach out to the Citrus Pregnancy Center. There's locations in Inverness and Crystal River. Their phone number is 352-341-5176. That's 352-341-5176. This broadcast has been sponsored in part by Henley's Grading Incorporated for all your land clearing and hauling needs located in Hernando, Florida, 352-897-3507 and Bruce Kaufman Construction providing all your home building needs, 352-400-0230. This program is sponsored by Crossbound Ministry of Inverness, Florida, 352-247-247. 9200. That's 352 247 9200.